welcome back to another new vlog or welcome if you're new here. My name is Bailey. I am a fourth grade teacher in Michigan and today we're starting off another new vlog. Let's get right into it. I want to chat about March is reading month. I just shared a few of the things that I've done in the past in my classroom and that we do as a whole school on Instagram but I wanted to share them here with you as well. Like I said my school does a few things all together throughout the month starting with a spirit month. So we were all given a calendar full of of spirit days or dress up theme days that we students and staff can choose to participate in each day, most of which of course are reading themed so they're super fun to participate in. The next thing that we do as a whole school is we do a book tournament. I believe it was our literacy team that picked a set of 16 books. The entire school will read those books and then vote March Madness style to narrow down one overall winner, eliminating books along the way, and then they have a huge bulletin board at the center of the school for us all to keep up to date with the voting results and progress. As a classroom in the past, I have done Mystery Reader. I absolutely love Mystery Reader. I think it's such a good opportunity for adults to come in to the classroom and share some books that they love. Unfortunately, my classroom is not doing it this year. We decided in fourth grade that we are not doing it this year, but I still love this idea and definitely encourage it if you're looking for something fun to do this month in your classroom. I would set up a sign up genius with times for each day, send it out to my students, adults at home, and then volunteers would sign up for a day. They would give me three clues about themselves and then kind of stand outside the door as we waited. When they came in, I would read off their clues and then the students would guess who was coming in to read to them that day. And then once I've revealed who our mystery reader is, they come in with a picture book of their choice and read it to the class. This is something that you can invite parents, family members, siblings, or other staff members at your school to do. It's a lot of fun. This last one was definitely unplanned, but we have a reward jar that we're working to fill together as a class. And we vote on a reward that we want to earn. And somehow, conveniently, my students have voted for a read-in. They're super excited for the opportunity to bring in blankets, pillows, a bag of picture books, set up forts around the room, and just sit and enjoy their books. We're over halfway to filling the jar, so I think that the timing is going to work out perfectly, that we're going to be able to have that read-in right at the end of March's reading month and right before spring break, but that is something that you could plan and schedule in as a March's reading month celebration. I know that my readers are really excited excited to be able to do that so I'm sure that yours would be too. March is definitely a busy time in the classroom but so much fun with all of our March's reading month activities. We also have conferences coming up next week. I talked a lot about that in my last vlog so if you're interested in seeing all the things that I'm doing to prepare for those conferences make sure to go check that out. We also of course have St. Patrick's Day which I'm going to chat about later in this vlog. Everything that I'm planning and prepping for that so I'll see you then. Let's talk St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day is on a Sunday. The Friday before we have conferences, so we have a half day, but I know that things are going to get really busy around here, especially with conferences coming up, so I'm trying to make sure that I'm prepared for St. Patrick's Day and just our normal things up until then. I keep a little folder like this in my file folder system for all of the holiday special events, things like that. That way I can just pull it out year to year and use things that I've used in the past so I just keep extra copies of activities. Here's what I have planned. In the morning they are going to do this I spy as morning work. This is something that I usually do depending on the holiday or theme day. If we have something special going on I find one of these I spies just on Google. I kept this one from a previous year so I just had to go in to my folder and make some copies of it. So we have this to start off our day. Then we have math right away in the morning. I just printed off some addition 
and subtraction, just one of those little riddle activities. So I think that they're going to have a lot of fun with that in math, and then we'll have our normal math lesson as well. And it's just a half day. So aside from some normal things that will, of course, sprinkle into that day, I thought that I would like to have a few fun themed activities for them on that Friday. I also am going to print one of these off for all of my kids and then have this at their desk when they come in in the morning. I always like to do so a bag of Lucky Charms with it for their breakfast that day. Hopefully I'll be able to do that again this year because my students have loved it in the past. I also do a craft. So this is the craft that we started yesterday. My mentor teacher gave this to me, but I'll see if I can find a link that I can share with you down below. They're taking a chance to reflect on the things that they feel lucky for. They're gonna write four of them in here. Then they get a set of these covers that they put a little bit of glue on it and then they kind of hang off. I put these on their lockers, which is good timing with conferences to switch things up as adults are coming in for their conference. They can take a peek at their craft, things that they feel lucky for, good conversation starter in the hallway. We're gonna make sure that all of that is done before conferences next week as well. This year also, I forgot I was sent this book off of my wish list, so I'll be reading this for Read Aloud. And then we are all set for St. Patrick's Day. So today is Thursday, but tomorrow we have a professional development day. So I'm making sure that I get all of my Friday things done today, which includes copies and plans for next week. So I just put that in the Friday bin and then I'll get up today's stuff as well. Here are the little covers that I have ready to go for today. We're gonna to finish up this craft. I am off to go work on those plans and copies. I also am hopefully going to get a good start on my conference slides today, working on that for next week. Tomorrow, like I said, is a professional development day, but I know that we're gonna have some time to work on our conference things in the afternoon, which I really appreciate. I also have a huge haul that I cannot wait to show you tomorrow. I'm gonna to bring it all in, so I'll see you then. I'm so excited because I partner with really good stuff every month to use some of their resources in my classroom. This is the first month that I am also working with Lakeshore Learning. I'm gonna unbox some things that I got in the mail this week and I figured it may be interesting if you wanna watch. The first thing that I got was actually a new book. It's an end of the year themed book, so it's called Instead of Goodbye. I read a little bit of it and got emotional, but it's Instead of Goodbye is is a heartwarming story that captures the spirit of the last day of school as the class explores their dreams and plans for the future the teacher bids farewell to them using the phrase I'll see you when I will from what I can tell so far it's a really sweet book that I can't wait to read at the end of the year this year this is the stuff that I got from really good stuff this month they sent me some literacy centers that I'm really excited to start using with my readers this one is about text features which we did earlier in the year but I think that it would be a really good thing to revisit, especially before the M step. So we have text features, making inferences, main idea. These little kits come with everything that you're gonna need to do it with your students. Another thing that I've noticed this year with my fourth graders is the need for some handwriting practice and reminders, making sure that we're using our best fourth grade handwriting when we're producing our work. I thought that these dry erase boards might be a good thing to do again in small groups. This side has the lines and then there's also the blank side. I got a set of those and then some erasers. From Lakeshore I was thinking about all of the indoor recesses that are unfortunately probably coming up. Thinking about adding some more options into my indoor recess cabinet. During indoor recess, I uh, ask my students not to go on technology. I think that they have enough time with their technology. I think it's a really good opportunity to play some of the games, get creative, talk with your friends. A lot of my students like play teacher on the board. It's really sweet to see how they fill that time and how they can entertain themselves and have fun without technology. With that in mind, I also wanna make sure that I have a lot of options for them. That was my thinking on everything that I got from Lakeshore. Charades for kids some dominoes, 
Then I got some splash math games. So I got subtraction, division, addition, and multiplication. This game, Smath. This looked like a really good opportunity to build on their fluency with equations and addition and subtraction. There's also, I think, some multiplication in there, just building equations. I thought this would be really good for my mathematicians. My students love to get creative during indoor recess, so I got some colored construction paper, white construction paper, tan construction paper, and then bigger colored construction paper. Bingo! This roller coaster challenge I am super excited about. We're just wrapping up our energy unit in science. We were talking about roller coasters, height, energy, all of those fun things. So I'm really excited for them to have an opportunity to explore this and apply their learning from science. And then I got this set of bins because I also got some modeling foam. I thought that they would enjoy playing with this. And then I could also put it into the little bins and keep them organized and hopefully keep it more fresh if it's in the bins. That's everything I got from Lakeshore Learning thinking about indoor recess. I have an indoor recess cabinet where I have things like Sari, Yahtzee, decks of cards, Legos, things like that. I again like to keep my options as open as possible thinking about challenging them by not asking them or asking them not to go on to technology. If you're looking to build up your indoor recess options I also suggest putting things on on your Amazon wish list, but I was really excited to see all of the options that were on Lakeshore Learning, so that's definitely a place where I would look as well. I'm gonna get all of this put away and head home to enjoy my weekend, definitely resting up before a full week next week of conferences. I will be filming next week during conferences, all my final preparations and things like that, so if you're interested, make sure to subscribe. That will be up next weekend. Again, I did post a video on some of my prep for that already so check that out. I hope that you enjoyed learning about my March's reading month plans, St. Patrick's Day plans, and then seeing a little haul but I will see you in my next video. Thank you for watching.